Hey, good friends. Okay, quick one. Okay, I'm, I'm going back to the original key. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mama Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let me tell you that was not that easy i'm a little bit tired but who cares thank you thank you for the love thank you for showing love uh i played happy birthday because today is september 8th and traditionally we celebrate mary's birthday on september 8th so i thought it would also be very apropos <coughs> excuse me apart from wishing her a very happy birthday to play for her the beatles or is it the Beatles? Okay, anyway, um, I think you get the point. Let me move on. Try to make this video really tight. Guys, um, today was a tough day. You can probably hear by the playing. Um, yeah, but you know, playing the piano always makes the world a better place. So, why was it a tough day? because there was something that was on my mind for the past several weeks um okay there's been a lot on my mind um and today it finally came to a head today i um spoke with the person who was involved in the matter and um i don't know if there was a resolution but it was very helpful to be able to just speak it right and that's going to be the topic of the video um no actually the topic of the video is why stuff happens right like why stuff happens and how we handle it how i handle it let me just talk about myself maybe it will help you maybe it will help somebody uh, maybe i'm the only one who suffers these issues um if so help me tell me what to do um, or rather, feel free to give your input. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Bad things happen to us. At least I found bad things happen to me to bring out what needs bringing out. In other words, to bring about healing, to bring about resolution, to bring about transformation, um, to throw off the cover of darkness and step into the light as it were um i know that i am a person who has great difficulty um talking yeah i'm sure you can tell from these videos right <laughs> i am very shy no 
what I mean is really, uh, I, what's the word to use here? I, I don't want to say confronting people, um, but okay, revealing the truth to people. Um, and you know what? As somebody who posts on YouTube, I have come to find that <laughs> maybe it's just me. Maybe I didn't realize this before. Uh, maybe I was just that naive, but a lot of what we're seeing on the media, even especially social media, is pretense. It is lies and it is pretense. Somebody like me sits in their pajamas and comes up with some idea, plays the piano not very well, and then talks to you people um, in the hopes that it is going to be authentic. Um, sometimes it is, yes, I think when the spirit inspires, then it is, but most of the time on this media of ours called social, which is not social, it is just, it is fake, I'm telling you, and you get to see it, um, there, there are, I, I think I watch too much social media, I'm, too much YouTube anyway, um, I've just come to find that there's there are just so many people out there who it's too easy to put your phone down, open up a, the camera and start filming. What gives you the authority? What gives me the moral authority to tell you anything, right? Um, I won't claim to have it. All I'm going to claim to have, especially in this video, is my own experience. If it can help somebody, then I really, I pray and I trust that it does. If it is not helpful, you can stop watching right now. Remember, this channel is not about hit the like and subscribe button. Nah, nah, nah. You didn't come here to do that. I just, I hope to portray truth. Trust me, it's not easy. Okay, going back to why bad things happen. You know, uh, remember Joseph? Joseph in, in Genesis, right? The one who was sold into slavery. We know the story. Uh, his brothers were envious. Um, he was a dreamer. You know, had these dreams that didn't help his case much with his brothers. And they wanted to kill him. Then they decided to sell him into slavery in Egypt. And then they lied to their father. The very, really what could appear to be a tragic story the young man is sold off to become a slave and so he is into the household of potiphar far potiphar right um but we know that joseph conducted himself with a lot of integrity when potiphar's wife approached him <laughs> it's a weird situation if ever there was one i mean woman in the household is like she's like a wealthy woman and then she's timing this young hebrew slave i talk about dysfunction anyway um joseph said no he was he had integrity and he stayed true to who he was and you know what happened because of that he ended up in prison okay for a good if i'm not strong uh it's I, I can't find it right now, but I remember referencing from somewhere something like 13 years, 8 to 13 years. Let's say not less than, not less than 8 years. That man was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Wow. All these convicts out there who are in prison for crimes they didn't commit. All these people who are being uh, chastised by society for things that they didn't do. All of us who are judging other people without really knowing their circumstances and, so to speak, putting them in prison, you, ha you are in good company, okay? If this kind of thing has happened to you, you're already in good company, especially, and if you're innocent, oh, 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 oh. Okay, moving along swiftly. Now, so we know the story, right? Like Joseph um interprets dreams even in prison and then he goes from prison to being prime minister you know pharaoh uh, you know appoints him and so on and so forth but the story doesn't end there because now uh you know his brothers 
years later are coming to Egypt to look for food because the whole world has famine. Ooh, I'm thirsty. Um, and then later on, like they, they, you know, he reveals himself to them, right? After a whole... It's such a good story. I would highly recommend, you know. By the way, I keep telling people, read your Bibles, eh? And if you want, you know, if you if you have insomnia or something, you know, or if you're just a board and you don't know what to do, may I just suggest that you take up Genesis? Like, this this book has a lot of interesting stories, eh? This, but the other one yeah, I like is Esther. It's such a fascinating, another story, eh? Um, who else? Oh, Job, of course, is still there. Uh, the book of Samuel, Kings also, you know, talking about David, um, Old Testament heroes and heroines, Judith, another one, um, Susanna, um, you know, eh, read your Bible, read your, there's drama in here, real life drama that will speak to your, listen, okay, going back to Joseph, right, when he reveals to his brothers, there are two things that I want to point out here, a very bad thing happened to Joseph, right, but listen to what he says, eh? In Genesis 45 and 7, he says, um, the one we hear about most of the time is Genesis um, Genesis 50, right? Where he says, even though you intended to do harm to me, Genesis 50 and 20, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people. We heard that one a lot and it is it's fascinating how God used an evil thing, an evil happening in the life of Joseph um, to preserve many other people, to bring about a good thing, not only for Joseph, who became prime minister of Egypt, but for probably, listen, maybe even for me, <laughs> because me, I'm here in Africa, right? And I'm descended from Africans, right? And Egypt, as we all know, is in Africa. And we were told the whole world had famine, right? So it may not be too far a stretch of the imagination for my ancestors to have gone all the way to Egypt because the whole world was going to the only place where there was food in Egypt. I'm just saying. So maybe even me, I'm here because of Joseph's good. Uh, because of what happened, this evil thing that happened to Joseph, but which God intended for good. It's right here. Those are the words. God intended it for good. Uh -huh. So these weird and funny things that are happening to me, to you, to all of us, they are not an accident. They are not outside of God's providential and perfect plan because he actually intends that evil for good. Listen, there's another part here which I just came across as I was looking for Genesis 15. Genesis 45, at the moment, you know, the, this is the peak of the drama, right? It's not drama, this is a story. Yeah? At that, this account, when now Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, he says, God sent me pre before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So, again, just imagine when we are told to love our enemies just imagine that the things they are doing to you you know are actually they they may intend it for evil to you yourself but it is going to be something that god uses to bless them surprise okay they at the time may think that you know they are harming you and that they are causing disaster to you. Um, but in actual fact, they themselves are being preserved, perhaps, to see you exalted. Okay, I don't know. That's kind of petty. But Joseph's brothers saw Joseph's dream come true. And even they benefited by being humbled, you know. In that evil action, it brought about something good for them. So once again, you know, I'm just starting to see that perhaps the evil things that others are doing to us can actually bring about not only our own good, our own uh, benefit, but can bring about a transformation to the person who is doing evil to you. So the upshot of it is love your enemies. 
Hey, he wasn't kidding. I think there's something very deep. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Because, of course, there's a reward for you. But ultimately, God is the one who goes, leaves 99 and goes after one lost one. He wants no one to be lost. So those evil actions, yes, if you take them well, you know, they become something to redeem you, but also to redeem the person who has performed them. It took me a long time to bring out that point. But anyway, just saying. Um, you know what? One thing I want to reference also, um, today being Mother Mary's birthday, um, it was said today at Mass really beautifully that this is a woman who didn't always understand things, right? Um, like, so this angel comes to her and, you know, gives her the news of the incarnation, which she accepts, but now she has to let Joseph know about it, right? Who is already betrothed to her, Joseph, right? And you know what? She didn't have to break the news because Joseph, he had already resolved to divorce her quietly, right? And then an angel came to him. Oh, look at this. Another parallel. Another Joseph. Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph in the New Testament. Joseph used to have dreams in the Old Testament. Joseph in the New Testament is now having a dream where an angel of the Lord comes to him and tells him, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, right? Um, Mary, this thing has happened. It's a good and wonderful and holy and, I mean, this is our salvation, right? That is happening. But she doesn't know how to tell Joseph. It's going to be a very sticky situation. She lets go, lets God, and boy, does God show up. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, many of us, if we see an angel, I think we're going to be convinced, okay? Although, funnily enough, remember Zachariah saw an angel but started arguing the facts of life with an angel. I'm too old. My wife is old. Anyway, um, and, and there, therein lies the difference. Joseph, in the New Testament, and in the Old too, was somebody, he's described as a just man, right? So when this message, he, first of all, you know, I've heard a couple of interpretations. We know here, we are told that he we had resolved to divorce her quietly. People are saying that, uh, okay, he um, didn't, being a just man, he didn't want to say he's responsible for something he's not. But at the same time, he doesn't want to embarrass Mary, right? Uh, so that's why the quiet divorce. Another interpretation I heard, which is quite interesting, is that he, being a just man, um knew and he knowing the character of mary knows that she's not she didn't she wasn't up to any monkey business so he understands that what is in her is not ordinary and is very likely from god so he doesn't he wants to withdraw being a humble man he wants to withdraw and not be part of it do you remember peter when he first met our lord and uh, there was this huge catch of fish and he says, depart from me, Lord, you know, for I am a sinful man. Joseph was not a sinful man, okay? But in this interpretation, he wanted to step back and let God, you know, carry on, you know, with the plans. He didn't feel that he was worthy to be involved, but God chose him because he was a humble man. And he came and told him, no, don't be afraid. Uh, and the same thing that Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. The one thing that Peter needed to hear, you know, uh, not arguing with him or anything. Yeah, you're not that brave. Da, na, na, na. Oh my God, what a long video. Um, the whole point of it being evil and strange and, you know, I actually perhaps I can be so bold as to say in God's economy, nothing is evil. Nothing is beyond the reach of his infinite ability, his infinite, let me say, omnipotent, deep, vast, wide, immense love and mercy. Scripture talks of him as being steadfast love and compassion. Um, 
Does this mean there's a why the same God's mercy? Da 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 da. Um, yes, he's blessing. There, like there's nothing that we can really call evil. You know, somebody even pointed out that during Easter, the Easter vigil, when we sing, you know, it, it, when we just reflect from the very beginning of creation, how Adam and Eve fell. Um, there's there's, there's, there's a, there are the words of the prayer that go, uh, oh, uh, happy fall of Adam and Eve, oh, necessary sin that brought about our redemption. Meaning that that evil, you know, it looks so terrible, you know, we've lost paradise, we've fallen from grace, um, now we are subject to, you know, just the struggles, just you know, the, the life of concupiscence rather than, you know, being kind of inclined towards the good, we are always just being drawn towards evil. You know, it's so frustrating. Like St. Paul said, you know, the good I want to do, I am not doing. And the bad I don't want to do is what I am doing. Talk about playing the piano. You want to play well, but you just are making mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. It is, it is just one big frustration. Um, but all this to say, no, in God's infinite plan, he wanted to bring Christ into creation. Okay, he could have done it some other way without having Adam and Eve fall, but he is infinitely wise. That was the way, the best way for him to have Emmanuel, God among us, you know, eventually. So, it isn't so, so terrible. These horrible things, horrible in quotes, Joseph being sold into slavery. Turns out that God had a plan there, you know. Um, Mary being pregnant outside of wedlock. Oh boy, did God have a plan there. Me being unable to communicate with authenticity and to really show my true self. God is bringing out stuff that needs to be healed. Um, you know, this whole COVID situation, We've lost our jobs. We've lost our income. We've lost our, I don't know, just our, our sense of bearing. God has such a good plan for all of this, at least for me. I've come to understand that I was latching onto things that really, here it is, the difficulty of authentic communication. I was latching onto money and I was using that as my security. Um, and I'm not saying money is bad. No, what I am saying is that you just can't serve two masters. And I really think God has allowed me to see it and to choose for myself which master I'm going to be serving. Um, not always easy. I regress. I really do. But I just, you know, I keep trying to pursue bit by bit, inch by inch, moment by moment, prayer by prayer, um, that ultimate goal. Oh, okay, this has been such a long and rambling video. I really don't know if I've made the point. I hope I have. Just try, you know, I'll say it again. Read your Bible. There's a lot of Old Testament and New Testament. You know, just the people that we see encountering God, whether it's you know, Joseph and the drama of being sold into Egypt, whether it's Peter, you know, saying, I'll die with you, Lord, and then denying him, whether it's Mary, who is this ever silent person, but pondering, oh, pondering, remember? She would ponder these things in her heart. What could it mean? It's such a fine example for us to follow when life happens to us. What could it mean in God's wonderful economy? Uh, there's something I wanted to read also, eh? From Faustino's diary. Um, where is it? I'm just going to take my journal here because I put it down somewhere. You know, by now I'm like, ah, the video is so long. I'm, I'm not even going to rush anymore. Um, it was... Do, 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 do. Okay, I have lost it. And I had it. Yeah. Oh, how frustrating. 
Okay. There was a point that was that she made. Um, there we go. <laughs> it's right here. Diary point number five eighty six. But I, again, I would recommend this highly to people. But I will say this: you can't read it without prayer. You need to pray first before you do. At least for me, I found that it only. I I tried in the past to read it and gave up. I I didn't get to it. But now, and. And I'm not saying it to show off. I'm saying it because it's true that I've been able to follow along and to really delve deep into the mercy of God that St. Faustina wanted to communicate to the whole world. And that, I think, has been a fruit of prayer. This book, very good book to be read in prayer, right? Um, so, diary, point number 586. Listen to this. Shocking, but so well. Okay, so, um, Faustina is thinking of starting a different congregation, leaving the one that she's in. Like she feels this inspiration. And then, you know, our Lord spoke with her. Um, and she recorded, she made an account, very faithful account um, of what, of the inspirations that she had from our Lord, from our Lady, right? Uh, and this is what our Lord is telling her. To confirm your spirit, I speak through my representatives in accordance with what I demand of you, but know that this will not always be so. They will oppose you in many things, and through this, my grace will be manifest in you, and it will be evident that this matter is my doing. Wow, isn't that, isn't that fascinating? That we are called to be humble, right? We're not just called, I want to start a congregation and I'm going to do it by myself. Mm -mm. This is why I love our church, because there is such a, you know, there, there is a, beautiful kind of order our god is a god of order and there's a there, there are there, there's just this uh what can i say way there's a hierarchy which is not there to oppress i know that that's what everybody is potentially thinking mm -mm. it is there to really refine and filter and make sure that what is going through is from God. And even Jesus is saying it here. They will oppose you. Do you remember when, um, excuse me, in um, the Acts of the Apostles, when um, Gamaliel, I think, or, or one of these high priests, or one of these priests was saying, if this thing is from God, don't oppose them, because it will go forward. And if it is not from God, it will collapse, you know. So, um, again, here, let me just read it. Okay, but as for you, fear nothing. Hmm? I am always with you, and know this too, my daughter. Here's the point I want to make. All creatures, whether they know it or not, and whether they want to or not, always fulfill my will. So there's nothing like opposition to God's will. It may appear that way to our human eyes, but his will will be done. You know, whether the people want or not, Joseph, his brothers, enemy attacks they are actually doing the will of god because god is omnipotent and he brings this into his infinite and perfect and loving and merciful will um i wanted to tell you more but this video has gone on way too long um let me end it here thank you so much for watching i hope that it's been, I had another book here, but I'm going to leave that aside for now. Um, somehow I hope this message has been useful to someone. It's a very long video. I agree and I know, but I just wanted to let it be known and heard. Bless you guys. Let's pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. One love. God love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye now.